try to find my way back to the back to the beginning of this area, and then I'll see if I can open that uh, hatch where you have to guess the uh, code. Okay, now you basically I think this code is actually randomized. is really finicky about letting you select stuff. See, I don't know if it's going to tell me when it's unlocked or not. Oh! Oh, that did it! Except now my flashlight's nearly dead. They had to know the truth and Hector would not tell it. So down here, where nobody would find him, he wrote on scraps of paper, maybe someday someone would discover them. Shit, shit, shit. Please tell me there's a charger down here, because I'm, I'm afraid if I... Oh, I don't want to leave, because then... Shit. Well, I actually think the, the bit about having to recharge your flashlight is kind of a neat game mechanic, but um, kind of not fair when you're underground and you have to use the flashlight or else you can't see it all. Stop telling me about Ellie. I already know what happened with her. Is it? Please tell me it's still unlocked because I don't remember what I. S Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. Oh, what did I select? Um. Okay, and I already don't remember what I selected, but. Is there really no. So, okay, they wrote stuff on scraps of paper, so what am I supposed to be looking at in here? Is this just one room? I thought this was going to be another maze. They had to know the truth. He wrote it on scraps of paper. Maybe one day someone would find them, but I don't see any scraps of paper. What am I supposed to be looking at in here? Oh, I guess that's just telling me all of the stuff I've been... Uh, I guess that's explaining all the stuff I've found already. They were writing stuff down because they didn't trust the guy who was in charge. I think that was the guy in charge. Shit. Okay, get me out of here. <sighs> yeah, well, whatever. Supposedly that last bit was um, optional, but I could never like beat this game until I did it, so... Let me get the hell out of here. The night was wild and cold. The monstrous tracks leading from the hatch were brand new, but the wind quickly erased them. Oh. So, it's eventually gonna get dark enough that I have to use my flashlight outdoors, but so far, not so much. Ooh, look at the pretty color the sky is. That stupid flashlight charger. There's still a box I haven't opened. I don't know where the key to that is supposed to be. How far out? Nope, I can't really go out very far. So what about this one? I guess I don't have the code for this one yet. Or maybe the other one led to this, and I don't know. I'm confused now. <laughs> oh, this is where the charger is, I think. There we are. else can I go? I know there are some uh, things I can look at here. Daniel sat with Ellie under the tree, his arm around her. Is there 
there's something over here. some stuff I need to explore. The night wind was cold. Oh, that's where I came from. Well, shit. Okay. This is where I started, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's... Okay, this... I don't believe I went this way yet. go behind this building. Some of these buildings you can like go behind and stuff and sometimes there's like a little hidden. Oh look at that! I can charge my flashlight there. I don't think I need to but that's neat. So this is a chapel I think. Daniel was still thinking about his talk with Abel the day before as he absentmindedly picked the book up. Something caught his eye, or rather, the lack of something. It's a little weird getting this story out of order. Because, <laughs> like, I already read, read about how he died, so... Hmm. The Word of Hector the Second. Actually, let me, let me see, um... Word of Hector. Maybe that's Word of Hector, too. I think there's more than one, uh... What's this one? Try to read these in order. Oh, well, that's four. There's one. The Word of Hector, one. The moon sliver was written by the pure spring rain upon pages of dried leaves and found by noble Hector. The moon spoke to Hector, saying, Take this, the moon sliver, and take it for... And make for it a place in the chapel of infinite light, for it is a holy for it is a holy document. Man cannot read it, but its every letter is known to the demons of the night and greatly feared. Know that it will I should turn off my flashlight. Know that it will protect you, even should my light cease to bathe the night in the holy sliver. The holy silver? What? Give it a place of honor and treat it as a prized possession, for it is your weapon against evil. And so Hector took the moon sliver and placed it in the chapel of infinite light upon a silver pedestal, and the night was warm with light, and the day was bright with warmth. Notice there's nothing on this pedestal. <laughs> so that was one. That's four. Oh, here we go. The word of Hector, two. The woodland teeth, the monster of the forest, was more tenacious than the other demons. It hated the people of Hector and desired to take the island away from them, and it lurked in dark corners and unseen passageways, <laughs> scheming horrific schemes. It came to pass that Ursula was taken, stalked by the woodland teeth in the dark underground, attacked and dragged down to hell. Then the moon came to Hector in a dream and said, Hector, the time has come. Your great enemy has arrived. You would all do well to tremble, for his power is great, and his depravity is unspeakable. Go take the moon sliver from its pedestal and do battle. And so Hector went to the Chapel of Infinite Light and retrieved the moon sliver and went into the tunnels. Mmm. I already read the bit about the tunnels. So wait, isn't there... Where did I... Didn't I see another one? What's this one? O oh world, O oh prison, dingy white, O oh ghostly shadow gray, your whelming lies of false delight are dark and cold as moonless night and bleak as sunless day. That neat little poem. So I'm missing a page. I'm not sure if I just missed it or did I? That's two. That's four. What's this one? Oh, that's four. Well, it's missing a page, whatever. The word of Hector 4. Again, the moon came to Hector in a dream. The woodland teeth... 
The woodland teeth is vanquished, it said. Your people, damn it, flashlight. Your people are safe for now, but it still waits, lurking in the depths. It fears the moon sliver, and it will not dare to appear again while the holy document remains in your possession. But know this, should the moon sliver ever be destroyed, even my divine light will not be able to save you from the wrath of the woodland teeth and the darkness of hell. Keep it safe, keep it ready, and may you live in prosperity in this island that I have given you. Let your prosperity be a sign that the words I speak are true. Hmm. He stared at the empty dais for some time, struggling to comprehend this simple, shocking fact. Had someone moved it? Issa, perhaps? She was the only one with a key to the Chapel of Infinite Light. But Ellie or Abel could have borrowed it from her, as he had done, or taken it. Regardless, he had to tell the others. Okay. I'm glad I can recharge this. <laughs> Outside. Ooh, it's dark. Eh, where's the charger? Where's the charger? There you are. Okay. Okay, so I think the only thing left to do is unlock that one box, and... I'm being told it's optional. I did look at the, uh... Oh, actually, here's a thing I haven't looked at yet. They reached the ruins and strolled leisurely through them toward the shoreline. Issa could remember when the old building still stood there, filled with families. I'm sorry, he said, and he cried because he often cried during these talks. For what, she said, for a lot of things. I feel like I missed life, he said. Like it whizzed right by while I wasn't looking, and I'm watching it in di I'm watching it disappear into the horizon. Stuck in this prison. Oh, come on, she said. Look out at the water. Isn't it beautiful? It's lonely, he said. Lonely and infinite. Probably would have been better to explore this area in the daytime, but... Oh, whoops. We're old, Isa, said Abel. And we're getting older. We've been getting older since we were born, said Isa. She was always smiling. Abel never smiled. Oh, I already... Ah, oh, did I miss something there? Oh, I already read that one. Okay. These conversations were not new. Long ago, Isa had learned to love Abel, despite and for his despondency. She hugged him as the wind tossed her long gray hair around. You have to do everything before the game will let you uh, go into the shelter. These buildings? Have I been in these buildings? Oh! Issa kept a smile on her face, although she did not feel like smiling. She sat down beside the flashlight. What about Ellie? Has Ellie mentioned anything to you? She said. She didn't take it, she didn't take it either, he said. Nor did I, and nor did Abel, she said, and yet it's gone. Oh, they're talking about the moon sliver disappearing. The rusted junk cast shadows on the opposite wall. How do you know Abel didn't take it, she, he said. Because I trust him, she said. He's a dismal man, but he would never hurt any of us. Do you trust Ellie? Daniel didn't answer immediately. I trust all of you, he said, because that's how we ha how we have to live. Daniel, you're the last one I gave the key to, said Isa. Daniel stared at the mysterious control panels. He didn't meet her eyes. He never met anyone's eyes. I didn't take it, he said. Why would I take it? I am the one that told you it was missing. Okay, so I'm not able to fiddle with these, but they trigger a... They trigger some dialogue. Oh, hello. Um, is that everything to search in here? It looks like it. Okay. Okay, one more building. That one.
I'm saying that she knows more than she's telling us, said Ellie. My problem is that she's a liar, said Ellie angrily, fiddling with the knobs. I have a feeling I'm reading these out of order. Hang on a second. Oh, look, another charger. Actually, let me go around this corner first. What is your problem with Issa, Daniel said, putting his book down. He was annoyed at being interrupted here. My problem is that she's a liar, said Ellie angrily, fiddling with the knobs on the machine as she paced around. And that I have to keep explaining all this to you over and over again. You don't know her like I know her. Exactly, you're not an impartial judge, he said. I'm saying she knows more than she's telling us, said Ellie. She keeps the chapel locked and she's the only one with a key, said Ellie, leaning on the barrels and folding her arms. You're saying, you're saying she took it, he said? Hmm. Still nothing telling me to go to the... What is this? Anything? Oh. A strange acidic smell emanated from the pipe. Okay. What's left? Oh, I need to go back to those cabins because I think there was... I think there was a box I needed to unlock, even though... Supposedly it's optional, but I still haven't gotten the go-ahead to go into the shelter yet, so I'm assuming there are still things I need to do. What is this? The mysterious liquid is drained from the had drained from the tank and into the water long ago. Hmm. This place was a forest once. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt having to stumble around in the darkness. <laughs> I don't really like I don't really like this point. One thing I hate about this game is when I'm uh Oh, it's saying return to the mountain. Let me try to um do that one thing I did. Good lord, I could not see a damn thing. My flashlight's on. I think there was a box that I didn't open. I cannot see a damn thing. Holy shit, this is awful. Uh, where? Oh, I guess I reached the... I cannot see... Okay, I guess I'm gonna... I guess I'm gonna go into the mountain without having done everything. I hate to do that, but... Oh my god, where am I going? I cannot see a damn thing. Oh no, don't go out. What am I doing? Fuck. Oh, I guess I'm going through this door. Fuck it. Issa couldn't remember the last time she had been under the mountain. There was no reason to come here, but she had looked everywhere else. She clutched the old knife in her right hand. Yesterday, the moon sliver went missing. Today, Ellie, Daniel, and Abel were all nowhere to be found. She knew the, world, she knew the word of Hector by heart. The sinister implications were not lost on her. Oh. Ellie, she called. Daniel. Abel. <laughs> Chief McLeod. Abel heard her in answer. I'm here. There was something strange about his voice. Something Issa didn't like. What are you doing here? I am reading of ages past, he said. Do you know where Ellie and Daniel are, she said. I do not, he said. They are missing, she said. They are missing and the moon sliver is missing. Do you understand me? Do you understand what this implies? I do, he said. Night will fall in a few hours and we need to stick together. We can sleep in the same house. Mine or yours. We'll need... We'll keep the fire burning. We'll keep the door locked. And we will pray, Abel. We will, play, we will pray for the unseen moon for mercy and protection. Are you happy here, Issa? We can't stay in the dark. It thrives in the dark. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Please, Abel. There were tears in his eyes, and he struggled to, con he struggled to control his voice. I'm struggling to control my voice a little bit. Issa, I know you. I know every inch of you, and I know every corner of your mind. You aren't happy. None of us are happy. Issa didn't respond. I'm staying here. The tears were flowing freely now. I would like it if you stayed with me, Issa. Please stay with me. It will find you, Abel. I let it out, Issa. I destroyed the moon sliver. Issa was shocked and silent. I burned it yesterday after I talked with Daniel. Her eyes were filling with betrayed, angry tears. What? Abel? No. Why? Do you want to be dragged to hell? Do you want us to be dragged there with you? 
We're already in hell. This island, this horrible, barren, lonely island, this place of sin, this is hell. I saw the blasphemous scraps of paper Jeremiah found, those many years ago. I read them before they were destroyed. Perhaps I was the only one who did, and I did not believe them. But I have lived life since then, and I have seen the truth of their words. Oh, my flashlight isn't working anymore. Issa could not respond as tears streamed down her face. She just kept walking towards the sound of his voice, the knife clutched in her hand. You did not read the blasphemous scraps, Issa. But I did, and I remember them with incredible clarity. Supernatural clarity, even. Fear not the dark shadows or the scratches in the night, for the woodland teeth is your salvation. It is your escape. It said this and more, Isa. The woodland teeth is not here to take us to hell. It's here to take us away from hell. Ooh, twist. Um, oh. She could not see him- wait. Oh, okay, I did read that. She could not see him ahead, her flashlight beam cutting through the sickly fog. No, it's not. <laughs> he was sitting in a chair, a book in his lap. As she approached, she could see that he was crying too. Please trust me, please. Oh, I believe in the word of Hector, she said, and I will not go to hell. Please trust me, please. I read that in the wrong order. I believe the word of Hector, she said again, and she put the knife to her chest, point first. Oh no. No, no, Issa, please don't. Stay with me. Don't leave me alone. I love you, she spat tearfully. I love you so much. She closed her eyes and pushed. She remembered where the heart was located from one of her father's old books. Abel was too slow to catch her falling body. He knelt beside her and sobbed for some time. He was not a strong young man anymore, but Issa's body was light. He would take her out to the water. She had always loved the water. But then what? Read? Read until it found him? No, he didn't feel like reading anymore. He was ready to be rid of this entire cursed island, books and all. He would simply wander, aimlessly and freely, to take one last look at the island and feel the wind blowing the memories away. So we're playing as Abel, apparently. I think he's reliving all this stuff. I think that's the idea. And then, when night fell, he would return. And wait. And that's it. I think this is the end. It, it, uh... Oh! Did I just see somebody? Oh, that went by so fast, I thought I saw a person there. Wait, am I... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm still playing. Ha! <laughs> I guess I'm going towards this light. Morning dawned on the empty island, cold and bright and windy. The moon sliver. <clears throat> the moon sliver. It got to me a little bit. <laughs> Created by David Zemansky. And here we go with the credits. <laughs> can I make the credit? Yeah, I can make the credits go backwards if I walk backwards. <laughs> uh. Unity 4. Again, good games can come from Unity. <laughs> Dedicated to, again, his wife, I believe. The end. Of course, if you walk back, you can undo the end. <laughs> uh, so there we go. I thought that was an interesting story. It's, it's really hard to piece together. It's kind of a... It's kind of difficult. Um, but yeah, you, you pretty much get the gist of it, I think. I, I believe we were playing as Abel uh, that whole game. And I guess it was like after all this stuff had happened and he was reliving it. Which would kind of explain why the whole thing feels like a series of flashbacks. So yeah, I don't have too much to say about this one. It's not its not like real heavy on symbolism. It's just kind of a story that unfolds and, and uh, it's interesting. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's it for this one. I have one more. I have one more to play. It's called The Music Machine and that one... That one's also not really horror, but it's... Uh, but it's another interesting story, and that one's a lot more stylistic looking. It's a little bit more in the vein of um, 
finger bones, I think, visually, but not exactly. You'll, you'll see it when I play it. It's a really interesting looking game. So anyway, uh, that's it for now. See you next time.